if i ask you all that which is the tool that you most oftenly use while doing manual penetration testing on web applications or let's say bug bounty hunting i think most of you are going to say burp suit right well let me just dive a deep further into this question what exactly do we use in burp suit this is a question that i have asked a lot of beginners these days and some of the most common replies i've got is that we use the repeater tab uh, we use uh, burp suit proxy interception functionality we use intruder and you know uh, we use the extension that burp suit provides like authorize uh, paraminer etc right well all of these are quite great but you know burp suit has a lot more to offer than just these functionalities right and this is why in this video we are going to cover one of those such functionalities that is oftenly ignored by a lot of uh, people especially beginners which is the sequencer functionality or the sequencer tab right so in this video we'll be trying to cover the sequencer tab how it is used and how we can use sequencer tab in our penetration testing or bug bounty hunting that can help us to find very interesting vulnerabilities for example account takeovers right we'll go through a practical demonstration and we'll try to understand all of these things practically but as always before going to this video if you haven't checked out my previous video in which i have talked about business logic vulnerabilities and showed a live demonstration of how we can find these vulnerability then go ahead and check it out the link of the video is given in the description as well as you can see it at the right side of the screen and now with that being said let us get started So now let us go ahead and first talk about what exactly is this sequencer tab and what exactly does it do right so in simple terms what i can say is that sequencer tab will help you to understand a pattern between any part of the request whether it is cookies whether it is some kind of tokens and all those things now you may be asking that what is the you know uh, need for finding patterns in these things so for that let's take a very simple example let's say we have a functionality right let's say create an account or somewhere let's say gmail or maybe some other account right let's say you're trying to create that and once you have entered your you know uh, email address your password and all of your details you will receive an email from that company on your mail right now the mail will contain a link which will help you to activate your account i'm sure all of us have seen these kind of application right so now if you take a closer look at the link what you will see is that there is some random values inside you know that particular url right now that random value is actually your unique token that helps the application to verify that this is indeed you who has activated this account right now let's say that if that application is not properly randomizing the unique values what exactly can happen an attacker can predict the next token that can you know that can be generated by the web application if that happens then they will be able to generate or predict next tokens so basically they'll be able to create account or activate account on behalf of someone else right another example is a very famous example of the reset password functionality i think again we all have seen these functionalities as well right like when you are entering your email address and when you are requesting for reset password you'll get a link on your email account and again if you take a closer look that will contain a random value which is your unique token once you'll use that token you will be able to create a new password and then the password will be changed right and right after that the token or that url will get expired right so if somehow the attacker is able to predict these tokens so they'll predict the next token that can be generated by the application on your behalf and as a result they will be able to take over anyone's account by predicting their unique token right i hope i am explaining myself properly so this is exactly what sequencer tab does for us right so it identifies the patterns between these important functionalities like the reset token functionality the cookies right if you are able to predict the next cookie that might be assigned by the by the application then you will have complete account takeover right again the the activation uh, the activation url so it tries to find the pattern character by character or bit by bit give you a proper result of what exactly is you know randomized and what is not and based on all this data it will help us as an attacker to check whether these uh, unique uh, ids or unique tokens are actually predictable or not if it is then we'll be able to predict the next tokens this is as simple as that i hope you all have understood this and now with that being said let us go ahead and try to see that how we can exactly use sequencer in action so let's jump right to that part 
So to demonstrate this vulnerability, I have created this very simple lab. Okay, that is me making a real world scenario where we have this particular request body where you know, you can add your email address and then you'll receive a token. Now, assuming that there is a web application from where we have intercepted this request and captured it into the burp suit. Fine. So what we'll do here is that once we have this request to reset the password, we'll provide the email address, right? And then we're going to click on send. Now you see, once we click on the send uh, button, we've got this reset token, right? Which seems to be some kind of, uh, you know, value, right? And obviously this is a lab, so it is meant to be vulnerable, right? But even in real world scenarios, you will be able to find these vulnerabilities using the same technique, which I'm showing you right over here. Okay. So yeah, let's, let's go and see that. So what we are going to do is we'll try to generate few tokens. Okay. And we'll try to understand what exactly is happening here, right? Like just by seeing it with our eyes. So if I send like again a request and if you try to analyze all the requests, we'll see something very interesting. Okay. If you notice carefully, you can see that in all of these three requests that I've sent, this RST is pretty much common, right? And if we go to the end and you can see this double equals two is also common. Right now we have actually identified the pattern by ourselves. But the thing is that in real world scenario, this exact token can be very huge and can be very large, uh, you know, length of string. So this is the reason why we'll be using sequencer to identify whether there's any pattern inside this or not. Right. And to confirm this, that whether this reset token is valid, what we can simply do is we can copy this and we have another API endpoint, which is validate token here. I'm just going to put the token here and we'll see if it is a valid one or not. Okay. Let's send the request. And you can see it says valid token. We are allowed to reset the password now, right? So what we'll basically we are doing is we are trying to generate the reset token and then we going to validate whether this token generated by us is valid or not, right? Now, once we have the token, what exactly we can do is we can send this request to the sequencer. Okay. Like this, let me just clear all these things. We can actually send this to sequencer. Let me just do it again. Okay. And right over here, what we can do is we can look for this custom location, click on configure. Okay. And then we can select that value, which in which we are looking to find some patterns. For example, over here, we are looking to find patterns in this reset token, right? So this is where I'm going to just select the values like this. Okay. And it will automatically, you know, generate all the possible rules. Like it has automatically detected that we need to start after this expression and we need to end it after this delimiter. Okay. Perfect. So we just need to select it and then you need to click on. Okay. And finally, once all of these things are done, you simply need to click on start live capture, right? Let's just wait a few seconds. And now what it is exactly going to do is it will send multiple requests to the same endpoint. It will generate all the tokens and then it will analyze the token bit by bit and you know, on character level analysis. And then it will help us to identify which part of the token is actually static, let's say, or which part of the token is actually getting changed. So basically it will help us to identify the pattern inside that particular token. Okay. So I'll just wait for about uh, five minutes until we've had about uh, 4,000 tokens and then we'll analyze the report. Okay. So I will see you after four minutes, four minutes later. Okay. So now we have hit about uh, 4,000 requests already, right? Now this time I'm just going to click on the analyze now button. Okay. And now if you see the overall result in this summary section, what it says that the overall quality of randomness within the sample is estimated to be extremely poor. What does this mean? This means that the pattern or the randomness on which the tokens are generated is quite predictable. Anyone can predict it. It's extremely bad. Okay. And you see here, here we have the entropy chart. Okay. So the higher the entropy is the lower the possibility of, you know, predicting the uh, next token or you can say the randomness. Okay. Let me just stop it right over here. Okay. Let's click on stop. And then if you go to this character level analysis, this is something which is really, really interesting. Okay. So this chart will give you what are the characters which are getting, uh, you know, dynamically uh, generated and which of them are like very much predictable. Okay. So if you take a closer look character as zero, one, two, three and five, six at the position of zero, one, two, three and five, six are quite predictable or you can say quite static. Okay. This is, this simply means that these characters are very much predictable or, you know, simply static. Like if I go to the repeater 
and if you check that token if you take a closer look this value is pretty much same in all the requests right so this is what this exactly this particular chart is saying that character at position 0 which is r 1 which is s 2 which is t and position at 3 which is m right and this double equals to are pretty much same and are very predictable okay like if we let generate few more uh, requests like this you see in all these requests these values are very much predictable like these are you know like it's almost static right this rst and this double equals to what differs is according to burp sequencer is this character at position number four so if we go to this four position zero one two three four okay we can see that according to burp suit sequencer this particular character is the one which is you know getting dynamically assigned by the application a lot okay for the rest of it it seems to be either you know very less uh, randomized or simply static so now what we can get from this particular information as an attacker what we can do is we can try to add this value into burp in intruder and you know after you know more analysis what we can do is we can understand what exactly value is getting placed at this particular character value like sorry is this particular position like let me just go ahead and save the tokens here okay i'm going to save it to my desktop let's add this to stick.text save it right here and let me just go to the sequencer value yeah there it is you see these are all the tokens that have been generated by us okay if you take a closer look at all of these tokens you'll notice few things that after position like at position number four i think zero one two three four this value right if you take a closer look at this uh, character at position number four in all these tokens you see that all of these values are actually a string or you can say uh, uh, alphabetical uh, value right w a b c or something like that you know it can be capital or it can be small now we have already uh you know gather the information of what we actually need to brute force we can simply brute force the data from small a to capital z right including all the small and capital values and the possibility of finding the token is quite high right so and if, even if you take a closer look into these tokens you will notice one more interesting things like if you see many of the tokens are getting repeated like let me just copy it and let me just show it to you again okay down you see the same token has been repeated twice let me just go down to see if it has been repeated yeah you can see again it is so the, so the same token is getting repeated multiple times all right now this is also something interesting now we have this data what we can do is we can send the password reset request and then maybe we can use any one of this token and we'll keep trying to use this until will you know this token is accepted you know so what we can simply do is we can send all of these tokens into intruder okay first we need to you know send the token request okay like this let me just show it to you like first we can simply do is we can send a request like this you see this is the token generated okay what we can do is we can go to the validate token this is where the token is getting validated right so what we can simply do here is we can add this particular point to intruder okay and then when we can load the tokens that we have already saved since we know that the tokens are go going to be repeated again and again and again it is very high possibility that we'll be able to find the token without the need of brute forcing from the existing token that we have loaded or that we have saved right let me just go ahead and load that let's go to sequencer and simply we can just start this attack okay now again i'm using the community version so obviously it will be very slow okay so and you can see clearly we have got the token here you see like if, may, if i just send this request to repeater you can see that we have got this token without any issues even if we send the request you see that it says success valid token which was the same token that has been generated by the application right so this is how you can use sequencer to predict the next token you know the token can be you know maybe it can be an otp maybe you know uh, something more interesting 
like uh, the CSRF token, the session token or something like that, right? And the impact can be huge as we can see from here that if you're able to, you know, let's say that if it was a real world application and if we've got the reset password token, what we can do is we can simply reset the, uh, you know, the, the user uh, credential, right? The user's password. And then we'll have the whole access of that particular account, right? So this is how you can use Sequencer in your penetration testing or bug bounty hunting uh, journey where you will be able to find patterns within tokens. So whenever you are, you know, encountering with an application that is generating some kind of patterns, mostly into the reset password functionalities, go check out this Sequencer functionality and see if there's any, you know, uh, pattern, or if there's any, op you know, option to predict the next token, okay? I hope you all have learned something new. I hope you all have uh, enjoyed this video. If you have any doubts, if you have any issues, feel free to let me know your doubts or issues in the comment section. Also, do join our Telegram channel if you want to stay updated with the latest trends and technologies going into cybersecurity, ethical hacking, and bug bounty hunting. And now, with that being said, keep learning, keep hacking, and thank you so much for watching this video.